is Matthew Rocklin, and he'll be talking about SymPy stats, um, uncertainty modeling. It looks like, can you guys hear me with this? Is that fine? Uh, it looks like I'm cutting off a bit on the side. Uh, hopefully nothing important is over there. Um, so uh, I'm at Rocklin. Uh, this is SymPy stats, uh, which has nothing to do with pandas or any kind of data analysis. Uh, so, uh, in particular, statisticians tend to call themselves either stat statisticians, in which case they derive insight from data. Uh, pandas let's do that. Uh, they can also be probabilists, in which case they derive insight from models. Uh, so here's an example with CO2 emissions. On the left is a famous plot of CO2 uh, emissions that were detected on Mauna Kea in Hawaii, and they're rising. There's this cyclical uh, change from the seasons. And on the right is some models from the IPCC uh, big paper that came out. And notice on the right, it goes beyond into the future. So that's definitely a model, that's not data. Uh, so today, the talk is about the right side. Uh, notice on the right, there's these bars, the different models, uh, and they all have these little fuzzy things around them. Those are some sort of uncertainty bounds. Um, so you can have different models. Those models can be wrong. Uh, they can have data, that data can be wrong. Uh, and so today, I'm going to talk about um, modeling, uh, just sort of building mathematical models and then building code from that. Uh, we'll talk about uncertainty. Uh, so when we don't know our inputs very well, what do we do? Uh, how can we build models with that uh, engage? Um, I work on SymPy stats. I think it's the only talk uh, this year about from SymPy stats, so I'll try to cover SymPy stats a bit and I'll give some philosophy at the end. Okay, uh, so why is uncertainty important? Uh, so imagine there's some wind, there's wind often, and you want to get energy from it, okay? So if the wind's going three miles an hour, you have some model that tells you you get 50 kilowatts, okay? You have some other model that talks about transmission of electricity through the grid. It's a very complex problem, but we have models. And then, uh, let's see, you know what? I think we're gonna switch to... That sort of works. Hey, thank you. Yeah, great. Okay, yeah. So on the left, we have some inputs, we have some model in the middle, and on the right, we have this conclusion that lights are on, we can perform surgery. That's great. Uh, but what if we don't know the wind speed exactly because we can't predict the weather? Okay, which is actually a real problem. Uh, then, you know, our measurements aren't numbers, they're distributions. Uh, and our models become sort of complex. How do we deal with that uncertainty in our models? And at the end, we want to ask some question. We want to query our model. Are the lights going to be on when I perform brain surgery? Uh, so this is actually a real problem. Uh, you know, oh, renewable energies are often weather dependent. Uh, and in order to sort of really embed them into our system, we need to be able to answer these questions. Otherwise, we can't perform brain surgery with high probability. Uh, OK. So. We're going to think of a simpler problem. This is a problem in kinematics. Uh, so you have a cannon. You're trying to hit a target. Uh, the target is in some valley below. You can control the velocity of the cannon and sort of the angle. Okay, so simpler problem in the weather, but we've all seen this, I hope, in some physics class. Um, so we could solve this problem in Python. Um, at the top, I define some inputs. Uh, our cannon is at the origin. The valley is 30 meters below. You know, we're firing at certain parameters. Uh, and then we have a solution code. The solution code is really, really simple. We just evolve time forward until, uh, until our ball is beneath the ground. At that point, we take the time, we compute the x distance. Okay. Uh, so one thing to note about this is that the mathematical code, the thing that we sort of think of as math, I have my mouse over it here, uh, is inside the for loop. We sort of, we've mixed our statement of the problem with the method of solution. And I, I claim this is difficult to reason about. Uh, so this is where mathematical modeling comes in. I've modeled this with SymPy. Um, so SymPy tries to separate out the, how you pose the problem and how you solve the problem. Uh, so on the left, or so on the top, this inputs are the same. We haven't changed them at all. We've defined a time variable. We've defined a time variable. Um, we solve 
Uh, that's calling a SymPy function, which is a method of solution, but SymPy tries, if it can't solve something, it'll try to give you a lazy object back and um, get a solution out. Uh, the actual way you'd often solve this in SymPy is that the inputs, you wouldn't give numbers, uh, you would change the inputs just to symbols up there. Um, and then SymPy, rather than computing numbers for you, computes a graph. So a lot of talks in SciPy the last couple of years have had graphs like this. These are all the variables in that expression. Uh, so rather than computing numbers, it builds up this, this graph for you. Um, so the things on the top depends on the things on the bottom. The ones on the bottom are pure inputs. Um, so the impact time depends on y, which depends on the velocity, and a lot of other things too. Uh, SymPy can do a lot of cool things on, the, on this graph. Uh, it can just represent them simply. Uh, so here's the analytic solutions of this problem, if you happen to care about analytic solutions of kinematics. Um, you can do other things too. You can do derivatives. You can do lots of things. Code generation. Uh, a SymPy talk would talk more at this point. I'm going to diverge. I'm going to talk about uncertainty, which I haven't touched on yet. Uh, so uh, I worked on SymPy stats, which is, if I move around, is that disrupting voice at all? Okay. Uh, so SymPy stats uh, introduces a random variable type into the SymPy language. Uh, so it's a way to represent your uncertainty in this modeling system. Uh, so at the top, uh, we used to have v equals symbol v as a SymPy variable. Now we say v equals a normal random variable with mean 30 and standard deviation 1. Um, then you can ask various questions about that in nice spots. Uh, so here we're plotting the density of it. Um, you can also ask questions. You know, what's the problem that v is greater than 31? Okay. Um, but, um, so a lot of things depend on v, and they are also now random expressions. Uh, so everything that's in red is a random expression now, and we can query those expressions too. Um, so here are some examples at the top. Uh, this is the distribution of position as a function of x, y, and time, the cannonball. You know, where is the cannonball? Well, it could be a lot of places, depending on the velocity. Um, so at the top, there's a the full distribution. Uh, we can ask questions like, um, you know, have we hit the ground yet as a function of time? Uh, and you see that, you know, around five, no, we probably haven't yet hit the ground. At around six, yeah, we probably have. You know, at this time, 50-50 chance. Okay. So we can use SymPy to build up these expressions, and we can ask questions on them. The syntax ask questions is meant to look very much like what you saw in a stats book. Um, okay, so we have some fun functions like probability, expectation at the bottom. Uh, so impact time. We ask for the expectation of the impact time. When do we actually hit the ground? Um, and we get uh, this weird result. We get out, get out a number or symbolic expression. We get out an integral. Okay. Um, so that's, that's weird. I wanted something richer. Uh, it turns out that SymPy couldn't solve this problem analytically. Okay. And that's actually pretty common. Most mathematical models are more complex than kinematics. And even kinematics problems generate some pretty hairy problems when you add uncertainty. Um, so the SymPy integration routines can't solve this problem for us. It's a difficult integral to do. Uh, in that case, SymPy stats just returns to us a raw integral. Okay. And again, this is really, this is the common case with any interesting model. Interesting models won't be analytically solvable. Uh, it's really cool when they are. You get cool plots, you get cool LaTeX. It's great. Um, okay, so what do we do in that case? Um, so again, I want to separate out the definition of the problem from the method of solution. Uh, and SymPy stats has tried to do this pretty well, and this is sort of uh, a shtick that I have now. Um, so here, at, um, so we build these random expressions with this graph, and then we have these functions, probability, expectation, we can take samples, a few densities, variances, or some others. And those convert random expressions into some kind of computational expression. That computational expression is then often handed off to SymPy, but that can change. Uh, for example, uh, v is greater than 31. That's a random expression. It has a Boolean value. It could be true. It could be false. It has one of those two values certain probability. Uh, we can ask the probability that it's true. Um, and then SymPy stats is this arrow right here. And that generates the correct integral. 
Okay, so that's what SymPy stats does. Uh, then we hook into SymPy core, and there's some excellent integration routines that can solve these integrals and give us analytic results. So that's really fun. Um, what we saw with this other example, that we wanted to compute the expectation value of the impact time. Well, we can, we can create that integral, right? That's, that's hard to do. Uh, but SymPy core integration can't solve it for us. Um, so we have this weird laser result. Uh, turns out, I say that's okay, because there are lots of other ways to compute integrals. Uh, computing integrals is a really general problem, and there's like a thousand different papers on computing integrals in various contexts. You can have a thousand dimensional integrals, someone's got that for you. Um, you know, it's pretty easy to link into SciPy integrate. Um, we have a little Monte Carlo backend built into SymPy stats, so you can actually just uh, some syntactic sugar to activate that. Um, you can generate code, but more importantly, you just have this integral, and that's a nice little interface layer between SymPy stats and whatever other code you want to write. Uh, so uh, I'm going to talk for a second about what I call multi-compilation. It's the idea that we should just make very small projects, very atomic projects. I turn random expressions into integrals in this case, uh, and then I stop. I don't try to do an end-to-end -end solution. Um, so there's various types of random variables in SymPy stats, or in development in SymPy stats. Continuous random variables cause generated uh, integrals. Random variables like dice or coins generate Python uh, generators. Um, discrete infinite variables like Poisson should generate summations. We don't have that built yet, but it's sort of all the machinery is there. Uh, I want to give an example in multivariate normal random variables, because that's a very common example that's used. Um, and those generate SymPy matrix expressions. Uh, the next example is very experimental. It's in a development branch. Uh, don't use it, but it's fun. Um, so the top lines of code, um, if you don't know this, that's, that's fine. Uh, I'm describing a Kalman filter, or the situation. I'm describing the situation that's often used in data assimilation. Um, and you know, if you don't understand data assimilation, that's fine. Um, and it generates this thing at the bottom, which is this block matrix expression, which is a SymPy matrix expression. It's a fun little thing, uh, which gets reduced down to the bottom two lines. Uh, the bottom two lines are exactly the Kalman filter, uh, which is a, a well-loved algorithm, let's say. Um, so two things. One, sort of the Kalman filter is sort of a primitive SymPy stats, which is sort of nice. Uh, two, you, know, you can take this representation and you can go to your favorite linear algebra library. You know, the dense linear algebra space, linear algebra space in general, is very rapidly changing right now. There's lots of tools to take linear algebra expressions and compute them efficiently. That's a lot of scientific computing. Um, so SymPy stats is on top of that. It doesn't try to d dive in. It just gives you a nice interface layer. Um, Okay, so I'm almost done. Um, so this is my sort of shtick uh, that I've been talking about. Uh, so if you wanted to solve the weather problem at the be very beginning, you would need to understand a lot of these concepts, sort of arranged in a mathy to implementation-y stack. Um, and depending on your architecture, you might choose sort of a path through this. You might end up in the PowerPC land or the GPU land. Um, and we, we ask scientists to understand this, or we ask computer scientists to understand We ask individuals to understand this, and that's, that's quite a challenge. Um, so, I mean, we don't actually do that. We have a lot of uh, interface layers between here. I mean, so GCC, I would say, fits right here, right? And NVCC fits right there. They're there now. They're now. Um, so here's some few projects that I'm familiar with because they're popular in my space. Uh, you know, Petsy takes sort of sparse matrix algorithms and generates C code. Um, you know, Bloss and LawPack are well loved. Um, there are sort of dense numerical linear algebra, and they can compile down to C, down to Fortran. There's CUDA implementations. Uh, Phoenix is a project that takes sort of a math PDE DSL and auto generates the plus plus code. Sure, I'll be done in a second. Um, and so, what I'm going to say is that I like projects like Bloss and LawPack because they're horizontal. I really like horizontal blocks in this picture. Um, because they do one thing, they don't span a lot of layers, they just do one thing and they're done. As a result, you can generalize them pretty easily. You know, I'm sure when, so you can imagine architectures like system on a chip. Uh, 
I'm sure people will make Blossom Lawpack libraries for that. I can trust that Blossom Lawpack will always be available. Um, Simpy stats also aims to be very horizontal. Um, but I, I would like to see some more horizontal things up in this space, uh, and they're not. I have to like I have to call down to Blossom, call down to Lawpack, even if I do PDE code. Um, so that's my that's my shtick. Uh, this was a Google Summer of Code project it was funded last year. Uh, you know, it doesn't pay as well as internships from nice companies, but it is a lot of fun. I recommend it to any grad students in the room or undergrads. Uh, it's pretty fun. I've had a couple of contributors, which is amazing. Uh, it was really weird when I got contributors. I didn't understand it. Uh, Andy Terrell was a mentor back when. Simpy is a very fun project. It's a very active community. Um, they're a really fun group of people. Um, and it's fun to, it's a very, it's a very nice space. Uh, that's me. Uh, okay, I'm done. Any questions? Yeah, yeah, there's documentation. There's a uh, Sphinx Docs. There was a blog at some point. Um, there's, a, there's an article version of this for sci-fi proceedings uh, that will be released soon. I should mention that this is all in the development branch. This will be released in sci-fi, SynPy 0.72. Uh, so if you look in the docs now, it's not there. But if you download the repo, it's all, it's all there. Yeah. Andy wouldn't let me uh, finish with that. So. Any other questions? Great. Oh. So, to to what extent do you see it um, as? I don't know if this is. I'll repeat well, it. Anyway, uh, to what extent do you th do you see it as viable to bridge the gap between this representation of symbolic models and using the stats models machinery if you want to evaluate and fit a model that is described symbolically on a, on a specific data set and kind of bridge the two? Because there's been a lot of discussion on stats models and how to represent the models and. Some people have been kind of looking in this direction. There's the R kind of formula camp, and, and I didn't know of this, but it's really, really interesting to see it. Yeah, so just in case anyone didn't hear, the question is sort of how do you reconcile, or can we reconcile this project and models and projects like stats models? Uh, the answer, honestly, is I know very little statistics. Uh, I know very, very little data-driven statistics, so I haven't looked into stats models that much. Uh, at one point, there were some emails going through, uh, but never, nothing ever happened. Um, so if someone from Stats Models in the audience, I'd love to talk to you. Uh, but there's been no work in that right now. More questions? Okay. Thank you all.